Welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to be showing you the OCP add-on, which is the one-click proxy. And I'm going to show you how it can not only save you time in the viewport, but it'll save you valuable resources that you can actually use with your renders. And you can use it as a prototype, or you can just delete the modifier when you're ready to finish your scene. But let's go ahead and check this thing out. All right, the one-click proxy, you will now find this on Blender Market. There's a super basic version here, and then there's an upgraded version, which you can go check out. Both are very good. The um, 1.5 version has a lot of bells and whistles that the other one does not, but they're both very functional. So let's get over here and check it out. So I've got a little tiny scene made here, and the light gobos are courtesy of LM6 Studio, which I made. Uh, you can come in here and select any type of gobos you want. Just reload and have all different kinds and it just instantly will upload. I do have to select the light. And then when I select any particular gobo, it will change everything behind it. Uh, the scale, everything, you can kind of play around with it. And as it goes, if you don't know, the shadow soft size for light gobos will kind of soften these things out just a touch. And you can kind of change and adjust the lighting as you see fit. And LM Studio 6 is also on Blender Market under Mr. Steve 3D, so go check that out. So now I've just got this scene right here and I've heavily subdivided this Suzanne. I've got a procedural rock. Well, it's not procedural anymore. I applied all the modifiers. Then I've got this simple river rock platform. And if we look here at the count for this individual mesh, it's, it's quite high. And nobody wants their scene bogged down. So the cool thing is you can come over here and just click OCP one time, boom. And from that 61,000 down to four, uh, 4,878 triangles, 4,000 faces, so on. And of course that texture was gone. So let's go to like, check it out. This was material O2, just a little quick material that I made. I can go grab material O2 and boom, it's there. And so if I want to render that, I can render this image out. Uh, not only is my texture still there, but I don't see the proxy. It does not show up in the render period. It will not show up. So that's cool. And I can switch that, of course, to bounding box, if I wish. Whatever fits the closest pattern to what your mesh looks like. And you've got quite a few things in here. So starting from the top, I'll just go ahead and delete this one out because it's all, the UI is pretty simple. You can, you can learn this thing in under 10 minutes, maybe quicker. So I can OCP all objects. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take the OCP and it's going to add that to everything. In fact, I did not want to add that uh, to my actual scene background. So with that one selected, I can just delete it and get everything back. Now the objects I want are actually proxy. Okay, I got all these objects in here and I went from 161,000 triangles as a total down to 13,000. That's a lot more manageable for a viewport for going into the EV engine or being in cycles. And all of that's gonna be uh, pretty easy to use. Now, I've got the Geo wireframe, which adds an advanced wireframe. So maybe something like this object would go nice, something like a hard surface model. I can click the uh, Geo frame. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a little indicator down here. It says press Alt U or the Pi menu. And so what you can do is you can press Alt-U and you'll have a few options here. The Pi menu is still being worked on, but you can drop the wireframe on this and it'll give you a nice procedural wireframe with a modifier set up. You can kind of play around with that if you want. Uh, that's not the most important part of it. The fact that you can come in here and proxy your uh, individual mesh, it's a pretty big deal. The icons will switch the names will switch as you as you switch these it'll say proxy green 
it means it's on. It'll just say object red means it's off. So you can, uh, can't actually see anything there now. Now the proxy is off, but the modifier is still on it and you can't see that material. You can either add the material or you can just delete that one and it'll come back. So inside of the list all OCP objects, this will actually list everything that has the modifier. So you could close this conceptually once you're done and everything in here that has that modifier is going to show up. So you have the proxy, you can go bounding box, you can take this one and you click from solid to wire, you see the little mesh icon change. And then what you do is you say, I want to show this wire uh, in render. And what that's going to allow you to do is change your object into a wireframe. And just keep in mind, not all objects are going to be uh, wonderful for wireframe, but you can make adjustments. So right here, you'll have the wire thickness. So 0 0.01, and it'll try to change that for you. And that is actually rendering out a wireframe. And that's probably as low as it can go, but that mesh is so dense, it's really not even practical for that. So you can do like in my icon, when you first see the car, uh, the cars in here, it works wonderful on cars very well. And that's one of the renders. Let's go back. So continuing down and I just turn wire off for this one. You'll have some different things you can do. Like you can switch the wire frame on and kind of see what's going on. Then you could go to the low poly and you could bring this down a touch more if you want to lower the poly count. And just keep in mind that these all start with a little bit of low poly on them. And so if you see it's not looking right, then you can turn that down all the way to zero. So you can play with the wireframe. And then here you'll be able to display the name of that object, which can be quite useful. And so I can grab whatever objects um, that I have here and then turn the name on for these. And then you'll be able to show an access for it. With just some good tools here. It's all basic, but you can good tools you can use. If you got the 3D cursor somewhere, like it's a way over here, it's always a pain. I've noticed that Shift S cursor to world origin doesn't work sometimes, but I've put one in here. It works every time. It will actually force the 3D cursor there, and every iteration of this has it, and it'll work. Now you can turn statistics on and off. And you'll be able to see that the icon changes. So you'll be able to know what state it's in. And then you can have cavity turned on. And of course, that is just a standard viewport feature that's going to turn it on for all of them. You can't turn it off for one object. That's a viewport feature. And then you could close this if you don't want that and individually select, you know, whatever you want. And in here, you'll have a delete button for each one of these. So you can delete all of that off of there if you don't want to use it. So you can individually do that, or you can grab every object in the scene like I did in the beginning and just OCP everything. Then I grabbed that one and turned it off. And everything will have the OCP. And there you go. That's it. That's the list. It's really not any harder than that. I think it's going to be a pretty powerful add-on for everybody to use and you can add your materials. And if you don't want to work here, this is identical. So you'll be able to work off of the node group in the side if you don't want to work from the end panel. But I've done it this way to keep it very low profile. So you'll be able to do this. You can also occlude anything. And so if you have any of these selected, you can also hit in front. And with the in front and the occlude, you should be able to see your mesh and work around it and work through it and figure out what's going on with it. Like I said, if you see anything funky there, the low poly uh, is just a slightly active just to kind of reduce. There you go. Go pick up the add on if you like it. Leave a like, leave a comment below if you find this useful. And if you have any suggestions for the add on, let me know. Subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.